Content warnings are in the description. Take care of yourself, and may the magic never fade. The student puts her keys between her fingers and walks back to her car with fists clenched, knuckles white, eyes downcast. The professor packs up his papers and wraps up his scarf, shielding his face from the rain. The retiree settles on her couch with a mug of hot chocolate. The protester squirms in discontent in the back of a squad car. The drunkard trips on the curb and splashes into a puddle of mud and misery. The courier slips into a shop to get out of the storm. The thief lingers in a black SUV, waiting for his phone to ring. The prisoner spits at the guard's feet. The nurse ducks into a storage closet to cry. They cling to their lives in search of answers that will not come. In a darkening world, the dawn never dims. The citizens slept, but the city awoke. And with it, woke sleepers who had forgotten what it means to dream. What's that all about? (laughs) Dream. 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 Baby, what did they do to you? This isn't a dream. It's a fucking nightmare. Nightmare. This isn't over. I'll come back for you. You can't make me fucking run anymore. Travelers, and welcome back to the Court of the Jester Princes. I am your storyteller, Jonas Tintinzer, and we are playing Vampire the Masquerade V5 Midnight Gravity Season 2. Whoa! Let's go, baby! Joining me tonight. Oh, I'll see that. There we go. Oh, I thought you were doing the bacon sounds again. <laughs> no, <laughs> no vampires. Oh. Uh. Our mindful magician, Casey Reardon. I play Matthias Wilson, and are you thirsting for another Thurston fact? I, oh, we can so do Oh, in that thirsty. break, I've managed to find so many more tasty little facts. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then feed them to me, Papa. <laughs> what do you feel like? We feel like going about uh, some weird death stuff. Let's do some weird yeah. death Let's stuff. Let's get some weird death stuff. Oh, we're yeah. Weird death stuff. Let's go. Says the Toreador. On the one year anniversary of his death, friend Claude Noble made a pilgrimage to Thurston's crypt with a magician's wand to fulfill what he called an after death pact to see whether it was possible to communicate with the dead. Ooh. Ooh. It didn't work. <laughs> oh. I see. You know, at first I thought you said Klaus Nomi, which will be a deep cut for some people there. Wait, Klaus, I know yeah. Klaus Nomi. I, I know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but you said Klaus Noble, which is like, yeah, that's that's many years apart. Speaking of uh, talking to the dead, our morbid mortician, Andrew Frost. We... I should have said Rachel. That would have been funny. <laughs> 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 All right. My name is Antonio Sergano. She was always the most pretty anyway. Aww. Oh, look, I can't cry again. I can't. I will. Our radiant rock star, Rachel Cordell. I'm Mars. And tonight's song is Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Pomplamoose. Hey. Pomplamoose. Je suis un Pomplamoose. Mm-hmm. Pay attention cover. to the gender of those in case you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Pomplamoose. And our prodigal prophet, Sky Swanson. Woo, let's all quack, quack, quack. Time for bird facts with Ajax. I mean, Reggie. Reggie. It's longer every time. Uh, Hummingbirds, this is, I love this fact. Hummingbirds consume about 14 human calories per day, depending on the species, because some of them are truly tiny. If you scale that up to human size, though, that is 121 thousand calories per day. Oh I'm confused. What's a human calorie? It's a measurement of energy. Yeah, do you do all that from just picking bits of flesh off of people? So 
calories are based off of like a basically a base size from what I understand. Like, I thought calories were energy. Of energy, yeah. There's some way that the math works where basically like because they're so small that you have to do the math differently for them. Hmm. But anywho, so that is 121,000 calories a day or 875 cans of Coke. Oh, so someone in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> hey, they get the peanuts in there, too. It's OK. That's right, Georgia. <laughs> you do throw gestured. peanuts in their Coke. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Georgia. We're coming for you. <laughs> Last time on Midnight Gravity. Oh, thank goodness. Our coterie made their claim to the Oculus, the Umbral Gateway, the Midnight Door. Faced with dreams of their past futures and others, they navigated the infinite void, reunited with each other, and returned to the rainy streets of Seattle, Washington, 2027. Though everything may not be the same as they remember. A white light envelops you. It's not warm, not cold, an absence, the twilight of awareness, the threshold between dreaming and waking. You cling to your memories of this place, not knowing what will linger on the other side of eternity. Your senses return to you one by one, the weight of dead flesh on your bones, the viscous pulse of vitae in your veins, the brush of wet fabric and the pressure of gravity binding you to the earth, the scent of sewage and seawater, the hum of cars dancing in a concrete ballet. Each sensation feels familiar and new, a cautious reunion with an old friend. You've changed. The city has changed. You can still taste the iron on your tongue. Maybe the taste never left. It's raining. It always rains before a funeral. That's Seattle for you. Yeah. Yeah. Tracks. Yeah. It's not that surprising about that. Yeah. Where's Chaz with those Seattle facts? Yeah, I know, right? Matthias. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I'm being singled out. <laughs> oh, teacher's <laughs> mad at us. Oh, God. <laughs> I paused for interaction. Uh, it's, I was hoping to be more impressed, but I'll take jokes. Um, <laughs> Matthias. Uh, Never. <laughs> Never. You emerge from the white space and... Each of your senses is coming back online like you're a computer booting up once again. You reacclimate yourself in your body. You shake off the sense of weightlessness. You rub your eyes to clear away the blinking lights. And you see that just like you were a moment ago, you are on stage. You're back at the prop. The pigeons overhead flutter and shake their wings. Thunder rolls outside. The air is sharp. Humid, chilly. Hmm. What time of day is it? Night. Oh, you're inside a building. Or night, I suppose. Well, listen, it could be day. I don't know. That's my question. Okay, Valid. <laughs> we we walk out of the door and instantly fall asleep <laughs> All right. in a pile. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap on Mythos. <laughs> <laughs> you you think that wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah, you don't. You're you're in uh, you're in a building. You don't know. Well, I hear the pitter patter of rain. Am I feeling a pull towards sleepiness? Yeah, you feel weak. All right. In that case, I am going to check a window. Okay. Um. <laughs> a simple solution to this problem. Look outside. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think waking up at this point, Matthias isn't really thinking about any of that. He is going to leave the building, and he's going to go to visit an old friend over in Beacon Hill. Wait, what? Where are you going? Wait, what? You know. You descend the stage and shuffle up to uh, the lobby of the auditorium. As you step out of the auditorium, though, and the door swings shut behind you, the oh, no. creak of the ancient push bar, you're, you're still kind of recalibrating seeing and hearing things. There's a shape in the periphery of your vision, then you kind of turn on reflex, not sure if it's going to leap at you or what, and you hear a clear voice call out, You're here. Finally. 
and as the shape takes form in your sightline, you see a Korean woman in a thick uh, wool coat, dark pants, sensible shoes, and uh, a multicolored scarf wrapped around her neck and a beanie. This is Vivi, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just haven't seen her in a beanie. Uh, (laughs) Did you wear a hat? I'm not saying she can't, I'm just saying it. She doesn't look good in hats. Let's be honest. It could have been Leslie in disguise. I don't know. Mm, Valid. Could still be. True. I, I'm. I'm sorry, Vivi. I. I. I need to check on something. No. 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 You're staying right here, and we're gonna have a talk. I've been coming here every Thursday night for the last three months. I think Matthias is like still like trying to like make his way towards the door, and when she says that, he like stops and turns and says, "What do you mean three months?" Yeah, I f- thought it would be something like that. Vivi? Check your phone. Pulls out his phone, looks at the date. You don't have your phone. Oh, fuck. I, th- I don't Keep have my Reggie. phone. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I did with your phone either. So. You probably threw it away. <laughs> probably. It probably Lost got in broken in, in a matter of minutes. <sighs> Reggie had my phone. You gave Reggie your phone willingly? Listen! It was a stressful situation. What day is it? It's Thursday, morning of Friday, September 23rd, 4th. Jesus Christ. It's 12.02. It it felt like a flash. I don't... What's happened? She, you see, she looks, of course, the same as ever. Kindred revert to their same undead state every night. But you do see almost there is a weight in her eyes and she kind of takes the beanie off and scrunches it into a pocket her long black hair tumbles down over her shoulders and you see the tips of it start to stand up slightly and then fall as a bolt of lightning flashes outside thunder again crackles through the sky she shakes her head she says i i know you're not gonna like hearing this i promise i will explain everything but we need to find the rest of your coterie as soon as possible Why? Everyone thinks you're dead. And at least for a little bit, I think we should keep it that way. He just slowly nods. Uh, She pulls out her phone. She's like, do you remember any of their numbers? Yeah. I mean, I've memorized all my friends' phone numbers. Uh, Of course you do. (laughs) (laughs) The hero we all needed. So old fashioned. <laughs> I know. Such an old Pulls style out and mentality. He actually, let me go get my rotary. <laughs> yeah, that's who it is. <laughs> Mars. Yes. You step through into a likewise familiar space, yet a little bit different than the one you just left. You see, all the structure is the same, but walls are a different color. The furniture has all been replaced or moved paintings and and photographs on the wall you do not recognize. You're home. You're in someone's home. Oh, not again. Where in the home am I? Not the bedroom. Please don't say the bedroom. I can't do that again. Uh, You are in the kitchen. Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, So I'm going to leave. Um, (laughs) How do you do that? Well, hold on. Security system, is it armed? I learned that the last time. You find a small panel by the door, the front door, and it does appear to be armed. With a gun. Is there Bang. any... That's a wrap on Mars. It's um, just got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no. ah! is, uh, is there any kind of, like, simple disarming on it, or... Kind of defeats the purpose of a security system. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> from the inside, Jonas. Uh, still defeats the purpose. That's the same thing. It's not different that way. <laughs> You need the code. Yeah. Um, I didn't learn the code last time. I'm going to go back to the kitchen, look for their doom drawer, and see if there's any paper or anything, any kind of note, I don't know, a book. Sure. Roll, um, roll, mm, roll wits investigation, Mars. Okay. Our first roll of season two. Woo! Yeah. Uh, how hungry am I? That's a great question. As you are, you know, like Matthias, kind of recalibrating your senses, and you're waiting to feel the bubbling blood in your stomach. Your earworm, your fugue, does return to you almost immediately. There is a distant melody playing in your mind, an echo of that mournful piano, but the hunger is absent. Mm. You mark yourself down at zero hunger. Zero hunger? Oh! Wasn't that nice? Good for you. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh god, I hope I didn't kill the person who lives here. Do we all get to do that? My god, I hope so. Matthias, you also may mark yourself at zero. Yeah. And Antonio and Reggie will get to you. I hope I get to. I got I got four hunger right now. Do you really? Yeah, I'm a hungry little guy. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I don't like the implications of this. Um, with that, can I also blood surge? Yeah. I failed, but honestly, that's fine. Almost immediately, upon realizing that you are not hungry, the hunger returns, and you kick yourself for sacrificing that moment of peace that you have things to do. Can't even savor the moment. Four successes. Four successes? Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. Worth it. Yeah, you scrounge through the drawers. You find the operation manual for the security system, and there is uh, a note on it that says, remember to change it. Zero one six one circled. Perfect. I mm, remember to change it. <laughs> I go and uh, try it out. Boop, 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 boop. Hoping they didn't change it already. System disarmed. <gasps> Thank God. And I'm going to leave. Quietly slip out the door. You are in a suburban neighborhood somewhere in the vicinity of Newcastle. <sighs> I know exactly where in Newcastle I am. <laughs> Um, I am walking down the street, and, uh, I am going to use my phone to call a Lyft or Uber or whatever's out here. To go to my apartment, I should say. Sure. Reggie. Mm Mm-hmm? You come to, in much the same way, your sense is coming back online, and you find yourself face-to-face with a huge, terrifying monster made of stone that is about to crush your head into pulp. Ah! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Ah, oh, oh, you stupid troll. As you settle into reality and witness the stone edifice of the Fremont Troll under a mm-hmm. bridge. Hey, buddy, how you been? Have I been here? What? The stone is silent. Hmm, all right, well, nothing to say as always, but so much to say at the same time. House on the bridge. Yeah, me too. A lot of weight. You do see in the distance a uh, uh, a pedestrian up on the street seems to have kind of stopped and turned your direction from the screaming. What? You never heard a guy talk to a troll before? They keep walking. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Am I hungry? You get a hold of yourself, try and sense the blood roiling within you, hoping for a moment that perhaps it hasn't followed you. You are hungry. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> you may set your hunger to two. Aye, that's better than four. It is better than four. All right, so I won't need to feed, like, right away. Yeah, you're in the troll. What's your first move? Pat my pockets to see uh, if I have a phone, because I don't remember. Uh, and I find <laughs> Matthias's phone, you I have think. three phones, I think, yeah. <laughs> well, one of them got rich. thrown into a puddle. I remember have- that. They all got recovered, though. You gave your phone to Matthias, but you have Matthias's phone and Timothy's. Incredible. That's so funny. So it is middle of the night, right? Uh, yeah, you can check either of the phones. They're locked, but they still show the timer when the screen wakes up. And as you check it, the clock ticks over to 12.01 a.m. Okay. I don't think Reggie checks the date. Sure. He doesn't even think to do that. He just checks the time and goes, all right, I don't know. How I ended up here, why... I kind of forget why I have three cell phones. Really gotta stop talking to you as I look at to the troll again. Uh, the troll says, you only have two cell phones. What? <laughs> Shin, okay. <laughs> we still dreaming? And Reggie will slap themselves in the face. <laughs> and it echoes off the wall. Yeah. And they're like, well, I mean, we still feel pain in those visions, so that doesn't really answer anything now, does it? Okay, now I'm going to stop talking to you. And Reggie walks away (laughs) from the troll. And I think Reggie just starts walking. uh, And subconsciously, they're walking towards the club. Mm -hmm. Like somehow their feet know better than they do. And that might be miles away. So Reggie might not even get there. But just as like a narrative note, Reggie is walking the shortest distance to that club. Doesn't even realize it. They're just walking, though. Because that's what Reggie does. They just walk the city, basically. You're tracing the same path that you were originally taken there, unknowing. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so Reggie's not even walking the best footpath. They're just walking, like, the street path, basically. Yeah. Antonio. Yes. You blink into existence in the middle of an old, abandoned, but relatively clean apartment. It is somewhat dusty from several weeks of neglect, but everything is whole, intact, preserved in a way that the rest of the building is not. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. Um. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, and without looking at his phone or anything, Antonio just gets to cleaning. Just immediately starts cleaning? Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah, you find a, a duster and a mop and a bucket and start mopping up the dusty floors, brushing off the shelves, straightening a few uh, portrait frames that had started to hang low. You also may set yourself to two hunger as you come to. Ooh! I'll also note for, for all of you, when you come to, you're not like lying down or in a chair or bed or anything. You're all just, you'll pop out standing up as if you had just stepped out of the door. Sorry about that. I guess, uh, I guess I dozed off for a second there. And he'll continue his normal routine. Okay. Matthias, uh, who do you call first? Probably I would go to call Reggie first, then remember what happened to Reggie's phone. <laughs> and so rather than call my own number, because it's not in the fourth, I guess I, I just said that Reggie has my phone. So I guess I'll call my phone. Uh, yeah, um, you do. As you're really you're like you did walk into the door holding Reggie's phone with the partition from right. Bahargrit. It isn't in your pockets, though. Mm. Oh. So that is strange. But yeah, you call your phone, uh, Reggie, as you're walking down just like a minute after you, a minute down the street, um, one of the phones in your pocket starts buzzing. Uh, I pull it down, check, uh, see who's calling. It would, I would have her number. Right, yeah, you're calling your phone. Yeah, it says uh, Vivi. Is this prying? Is this, mm, it's not, mm. No, that's Matthias's business, and I put the phone back in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I think Calls it, immediately it rings, again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Rich is like, ah, ah okay, um, and would answer it. And I almost want to roll like a d6 to see if I would pretend to be Matthias for sure. a moment. Yeah, roll a roll a willpower test. Okay. Then, um, <laughs> also, uh, while we're here, everyone may refresh your willpower completely. Great. Ooh. And health? Uh, not health. No. Okay then. Um, yeah, That's so zero successes. Besides, you hear someone answer. Just go, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's Matthias. No, it's Reggie. This is Matthias. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Reggie, this where is... are you? <laughs> Reggie is just standing there, really confused by that statement of just no. This is. Reggie, this is Matthias, because it just kind of snaps her brain for a moment. Yeah. Of like, wait, if I'm not Reggie, then am I Matthias? Like, is the dream still happening? And then they, they <laughs> snap out and go, um, uh, um, who knows? These fucking streets, uh, 26th and, uh, Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stay where you are. We're trying to get everybody together. Long story short, it's been three months since we disappeared. And, what? Uh, people think we're dead, and we're going to try and keep it that way for the time being. Hey, man. I'm Yeah, that's what I've wanted the whole time. <laughs> okay. Are you bringing a scooter? No, we'll take Vivi's van. Okay, cool. Oh, Vivi knows? Yeah. I guess that's not a bad thing. I'm, hi, Reggie. I'm here. Oh, yeah, hey, I have, Vivi. I have you on speaker. Oh. It's actually, it's been closer to five months total. You, you told me three. It's well, a bit longer than three. You vanished at the end of April, but I've been having visions of you coming back since June. Ah, oh, man. So, sorry, it's it's almost five. It's not important. Just... Of me or of the of everyone? No, of Matthias. Not important. Stay where you are and we'll pick you up. We'll pick you okay. up. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, <Adam. laughs> uh, What? Uh, oh, all right. But I think next would be Mars. Mars, your phone rings while you're in the, the car. Yeah, I'm probably, because Mars calls the Uber, gets in the car. <clears throat> As we're riding, I would probably be checking my phone. I would probably note the date. And do I have any texts? Like, is there anything coming in? Or, you know, calls, messages, etc.? Um, no. No, nothing. 
Okay. You surmise, I mean, you're a smart cookie, you surmise that given that you were in some kind of alternate dimension for the intervening time, they just, nothing delivered, so. So they stopped, okay. Yeah. In that case, I'm checking social media. Any news on the band? Lead singer absent for four months? Uh, give me a technology roll. Ooh. What technology? I don't know. What do you think? Wits? Charisma? Uh, intelligence? I mean, I'd love charisma as my highest no, stat. Cr- no, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah, wits or intelligence, technology. It's not a high difficulty. Being that those are the same. Uh, two successes. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing recent. You know, news cycles these days are quite fast. But you do search for, you know, your, your fake name, Amber Glamorgan. You search for the Furies and you do see some articles from uh, about the start of June saying essentially uh, what, what you can interpret from the articles you see is that your bandmates Mercury and Venus put up a convincing front. And rather than saying you have disappeared, uh, they seem to have claimed that you were taking a sabbatical. And uh, gotcha. the band has taken off performances for a while to prepare new music and uh, re- not reinvent, but sort of re-center themselves. Gotcha. Okay. While you're searching those articles, you also see in the related articles around the same time frame, there's something noted as happening in Seattle at about the same time. And sort of all the older articles, you know, there's a lot to sift through, a lot of information to parse, but there are multiple mentions and panicked posts and and a lot of weird memes about it that Seattle, all the citizens of Seattle, apparently fell into some kind of mass coma for a few days. What? And some few dozen or hundred people ended up dying due to either accidents or neglect as a result, although for the most part it seems that uh, everyone came to and was okay afterward. There's been kind of a mass effort to figure out what happened, what to do about it, how how did it happen, people suggesting all kinds of weird theories. No one has come to any solid conclusions. Because I think Mars would immediately try to contact her band, uh, I believe that's when she gets a phone call. Sure, yeah, You you as you go to your contacts, the phone buzzes. Uh, I don't know if I have this number, but I think I would answer it. Hello? Mars, it's Matthias. Oh, hi. Where did you wake up? The prop. Not really important right now. Oh, thank God. Okay. Um, Um, I don't know if you saw, but we've been gone for months. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at the news articles. Something about a mass coma? Did you see that? I looked directly at people. (laughs) She nods and makes an eye motion that indicates, yep, it's on the list. Apparently, like, everyone just slept. People died from it. Okay, yep. We'll, we'll get into that when we're all together again, but uh, long story short, BB's saying uh, everybody thinks we're dead and we need to keep it that way for the time being. What? Uh, can I at least call my my bandmates? The less people that know, the better. Well, listen, Mars, hi, I'm here, we're on speaker. I, I oh, promise hi. we'll work out everything as soon as possible. Probably you can make a couple safe calls, but just for right now, please just meet us at the prop, okay? Um... Okay, yeah, I have that address. And I would change the address to the prop theater. Mm-hmm. I think Matthias, like, under his breath, just says, since when did this become the meeting place? Did you have a better place? I don't know, do you? No. Like, this is, not everybody knows about this place, all right? Okay, then. Exactly, good. Mars will come here, we'll pick up <laughs> Reggie, we'll go somewhere else, whatever. It's fine, whatever. There's a lot going on. I call Antonio. <laughs> Mars, you also, when you change the address... It's like $50 more. I know. It is an expensive shift. You also see that the the driver of the rideshare is this uh, man with, like, kind of olive-toned skin. He's got sort of thick, muscular build, rectangular head, big chin, and short, close-cropped hair. Kind of looks a little bit like Steven Seagal. All right. <laughs> okay. As you, as you change, and you're like, oh, it's going to be another $50, he's like, hey, uh, no charge. Mm, nice. <laughs> Thanks. You look like you got places to be. <laughs> you're gross, dude. Um, yes. Just charge him. Steven, your acting career has gone down the toilet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Just poke um, in front of Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks. Why? Just, uh, just a favor. Oh, hate that. 
Seems like you've had a rough time. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. Throw out the whole man. Throw out the whole man. <laughs> <laughs> Throw out what? the whole man. You seem like you're having a rough night. I don't want to make it any harder. I'll get you where you need to go. Yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean favor? He chuckles and says, <laughs> you know, favor to a friend of a friend. Just pay it forward. Maybe, maybe call another Uber. <laughs> she is suspicious of this, but um, she'll accept it and ask no further questions for now. Please come back to me when the ride ends. <laughs> when the ride ends? <laughs> this is the ride. In the, in the rating, clean car, safe driver, absolute creep. <laughs> <laughs> Was that even so I'd like to have another interaction, but like getting out of the car is yeah, what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I thought you were just like, don't let me talk to him again. <laughs> no, no, please let me talk to him again. Matthias, you call Antonio. Hey, how can I help Vivian? Uh, it's Matthias. Vivi's here too. Um, oh, hi. What's up? So I don't know how much you've paid attention, but uh, it's been four months. Sorry, what? We've been gone four months. Matthias, you just hear the the clatter of a plastic mop handle as it <laughs> onto the floor. I mean, I know the the dream time goes weird, but yeah, it goes that weird. Wait, no, did this happen with Timothy too? I mean, it, he kind of said as much. All right, the tracks. All right, where am I meeting you guys? Uh, I don't think. And Ant- has Antonio been to the prop theater? I don't think he has. I don't no. think so. No. He's not. no, no, it was very, it was a very big deal when Mars got yeah, the invitation yeah, and address. You've true. only, you've only invited him over to your apartment. Yeah. Uh, and Antonio is always politely declined. <laughs> well, yeah, it's because the mama's good Italian. Right, right, right. Forgot. <laughs> Neither of you probably know this, but y- Antonio is currently two blocks away from the prop theater. That's pretty funny. That's really funny. <laughs> um... We'll 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 pick you up. We we have to go pick up Reggie anyway. All right. I'm not at the mortuary. I'm at the North Beacon, the condemned one. Great. We'll be there in five. Wait. How close are you guys? Don't worry about it. Five minutes away. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> they have to circle the block a couple of times before they <laughs> to they wait. They wait four minutes and then leave. <laughs> yeah. To make it seem like they're farther away. All right. Can't argue with that. All right, cool. Yeah. Antonio, um, outside, you see two people get in a car two blocks down and drive to you. <laughs> <laughs> the fi- actually, actually, the four minutes is just waiting for Mars to arrive, and then they all get together. Yeah, yeah, there we go. go. Yeah. Oh, um, it's only five minutes which, away. Yeah, but it was a $50 upcharge. Doesn't that suck? <laughs> oh, that's true. To speed? <laughs> uh, Mars, you, uh, your cabbie pulls up at the prop. Uh, it is, uh, you maybe give him a, a spot, you know, a block away. It's pouring rain outside. He doesn't make any move to, like, give you an umbrella or anything. He just pulls up, marks the ride as complete on his phone. He's like, here you are. And, um, what was your name? <laughs> uh, you know, Frank. I don't recognize the name, no. Mm. You, you, you recognize from his demeanor, it's not his name. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm like, um. <laughs> you look at your phone on Uber and it says, like, Patrick. It is the name in the app. It is he is named oh, okay. Frank. Yeah. yeah. Um I will activate Aw. 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 And um I'll ask again. No, really. What's your name? Go ahead and roll charisma persuasion plus awe. Uh plus presence rather. Yes. I know how dice work. <laughs> it's been a while. Been a while. It's been a while. No. Thank you. <sighs> Jesus, sorry, this is a lot of dice. Yes, it is. I think you have 12 dice. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't fuck that up. Maybe maybe 11 dice? 10, 10, 11, yeah, 11 dice. 11 dice to find out this information. Uh, with a crit, six. Six? You see no hint of recognition or appreciation behind his dark sunglasses. Ooh. And... He just, uh, he just, no, nah, he says, it's Frank. I'm, uh, just a guy who knows the value of, uh, of your time. Hope you get to your destination safely. Have a nice night. She smiles lightly, narrows her eyes a little bit, but then she pulls back. Thanks. And sends him off. No problem, Mars. Oh. And he drives off. 
fuck? Why'd you call an Uber? Well, her, her name is in the app. She's Martin's in the app. Like, come on. Uh, she's probably Amber in the app, but yeah. Yeah. He's just a fan of the Furies. She shakes her head, uh, seeing that failed interaction. <laughs> and the way she didn't get the information she wanted. And enters the prop theater. Yeah, you walk in the lobby, you see Viviano and Matthias there. Hi. Hi. I know we're trying to play incognito, but somebody knows I'm alive. Who? Frank. Oh, Frank, the Uber driver? Yeah, everybody knows Frank. <laughs> yeah, Frank, of course, Frank. Who's Frank? I don't fucking know. I just want to see him connected, BB. Yeah, the only five-star Uber driver in all of Seattle. <laughs> the only Uber driver. <laughs> the only one. Oh, the only, yeah, the only Uber driver. So, yeah, don't know if that really, uh... It's fine. Listen, it, it just let's go get your friends, please. Okay. We'll talk about all this when we're together. Yeah. Both of you. It's good to see you. She smiles. Good to see you, too. She kind of grips your shoulder, Matthias, one of those, you know, upper arm squeezes, and then you all pile into her car. You guys go pick up Antonio, standing outside an abandoned apartment building. Hey, uh, hey, Matthias, I, I, I don't want to be that guy, but mind if I get the front seat? <laughs> Matthias just stares at him. I get a little car sick in the back. We're kind of in a rush. All right, give a crack a window. Sure. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Vivian, good to see you. Antonio, a pleasure. Let's get moving. You get car sick? Yeah. It's not the weirdest thing I've heard. I have a thing with, like, spatial distance. The brain is a fickle thing. Say that again. You guys drive up north. You cross probably George Washington Bridge, and you find uh, find Reggie wandering down the sidewalk. When you pull up to that spot, Reggie is not there. And with a little bit of looking, it's not hard to find Reggie. You see Reggie just talking to a homeless guy in an alleyway nearby. And you just slightly overhear and be like, yeah, so we've been gone for like four months. (laughs) Um, And I had this crazy drink. Like, Reggie is just talking. Door, window winds down. So, so, I mean, anywho, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, Reggie. I was like fused with this Reggie. one guy and Reggie. Um, Reggie. there was a bunch of Bert, huh? <laughs> oh! Um, anywho, uh, don't tell anyone I was here. Uh, and Reggie walks away from that guy. Oh, the fuck was that guy? <laughs> the rest of you see Reggie talking to a couple of trash bags piled up next to a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll see you around. <laughs> You're welcome. My name's Frank. By the way. <laughs> this motherfucker. They drive off. They, they hop into a dumpster and drive away. Man, that was the creepiest couple of trash bags I ever met. Uh, but yeah, uh, you all load into the minivan, and Vivi rolls up the window. She uh, turns over her shoulder, says, uh, "Okay, hello. I understand. Actually, I don't understand. That's kind of the problem. I don't know what just happened to you, but you're all here." I don't... Is Timothy... I don't know. We're not sure about that. He was pretty adamant about splitting off from the group because we went through the door with something in particular. Yeah, he didn't really agree with um, what we kind of agreed to do. It's all a bit fuzzy, to be honest. Honestly, with where I showed up, who knows where he is. Right. He's safe, though. I was assured that he was safe. That's good. Comparatively. I mean, you know, I I don't think anybody could fucking stop that guy anyway. He made it back to Seattle. I just hope he's not uh, making too many waves. Compromised. Yeah. Same here. I think I'm technically still responsible for him. Oh, you're like his sponsor? Yeah, his Camarillo sponsor. Oh, I thought you... Okay, yeah, yeah, different kind of sponsor. But I thought since the prince died... Yeah, about that. Oh, boy. Where can we go to talk? Um, I mean, we can go to the mortuary. Your sire is there. That's true. I mean, do you guys just want to come inside? The the apartment building that you were outside of? Yeah. Vivi shakes her head. She's like, I saw that place. It's no good. Let's, um... Was the theater not a good spot? Matthias didn't want anyone <sighs> else. Can you not trust us for this if it's so important, Matthias? I'd love to trust everybody here. Looks pointedly at Reggie, but I don't think that trust has been earned by everybody. Yeah. That's fair. 
Yeah, Re- Reggie, Reggie just shrugs, and they're, they're not gonna argue it in this moment. They're still dazed. Yeah, for sure. And he's uh, he's a little confused. From my time uh, touring clubs, is there a quieter club that maybe I played when we first came back to Seattle that might be a good place to go? Not the Double Tap. What about Magnolia? I think in general, any public outing. You're not going to want to be seen at if you're going along with what Vivian says. But as you think of meeting places, Mars, there is one place that you frequently have gone to in Seattle and you didn't want to be overheard. Right. How about West Point Lighthouse? Uh, Yeah, works for me. Pulls off the curb and starts driving away. Vivi takes a, a long kind of winding route, making sure not to pass by any known kindred domains, any particular buildings that they might be hanging out at, avoiding the Space Needle, avoiding Karma, avoiding Olga's office. And eventually you arrive on the coast and to the uh, edge of the West Point Lighthouse, which is notoriously, in this timeline, understaffed. Light is spinning gently overhead. Everything's automated these days. Vivian parks the car and you guys walk a little bit ways down the beach to get away from it. She turns to all of you and says, okay, I'm going to say a couple things. I'd like to say them first and then we can go over the details. First of all, Lou Grand is Prince. What? Fuck. I mean, that tracks. Hot. It makes sense. What, what do you mean? How did she, who voted for her? I don't know who wouldn't vote for her. Have you seen her? It's not a popularity contest. I mean, it is, but it's not. She pushed for a vote. The clans came back. It was 3-2 in favor. No way. And the two being, I assume you. No, no one voted for me. No, no, I mean, against. Who are the two holdouts? Well, I voted for Grunch and Goga abstained. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. Abstained. Megara's daughter is still in the bay. I've spoken to the Hikata, but they don't know what happened either. If you've checked your phones, you might have seen there was some kind of mass coma thing that happened. Yeah. That I didn't see. Oh yeah, Reggie, can I get my phone back? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I hand it to you, and as I'm handing it to you, I accidentally drop it in the sand. Into the bay. <laughs> Into the bay. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, uh, I, it's probably fine. I fish it out. <laughs> Just put that in rice. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Put that. Um, maybe if we pack it with the sand, like the dry sand. How? How many dead? Total tally was uh, a couple hundred. It's hard to get an exact number because everyone was asleep, so it's not clear what caused what exactly. Yeah, I gotcha. Wait, everyone was asleep. So, so wait, 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 wait. By walking through that door, we killed a couple hundred people. No. No. I mean... Because that's what it sounds like. I don't know, Reggie. That's why... It happened at the time that we walked through the door? It happened in the days afterward. It wasn't instant. You didn't snap a finger and they died. Everyone fell asleep. So some people who were in the hospital, some people who were... Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think Reggie, like, walk- d- doesn't walk, like, away, but like walks, like, ten feet away into, like, yeah. the, the, the sand, and it's just kind of, like takes a moment. Can I can I ask one thing real fast of mm-hmm. the other players at this table right now? When Vivian said that a couple hundred people died, how did everyone react? Because Reggie would be looking. Mm-hmm. Mars, specifically, uh, her eyes would widen. She would show fear and concern. Her hand would rest on her heart and form a fist as if trying to grab on to a love. I think Matthias would look downcast, eyes kind of more going down than his whole head, maybe close his eyes for a second, mm-hmm. as more reflex of prayer than actual prayer, mm-hmm. <laughs> but not much more than that. It's, it's harder to get a read on Antonio because his eyes are obscured by the glasses. Yeah. His head is, it seems to be fixated at a point on the ground. And it has not moved from focusing on that spot, Mm -hmm. even though there seems to be nothing really there. And he continues to stare at it, even through his questioning. Reggie would observe that and and see that his fellow Coterie was uh, affected by that news. Yeah. Yeah. Vivian continues, they didn't even fall asleep exactly, just anyone who was sleeping that night didn't wake up. 
and anyone who was awake when they finally went to sleep, they didn't wake up either. Lasted a couple days, and then everyone just woke up at the same time like nothing had happened, and in the meantime, all the kindred around here started dreaming. What? Just out of curiosity, were the kindred also comatose at the time? No. I mean, there's the day sleep, of course, but every night we were waking up to a dead city trying to do as much as we could to minimize the damage without being noticed. Well, that paints a pretty big target on our backs, or on whoever's backs that wasn't comatose for the Inquisition, no? Yeah, so that's the last thing I want to tell you. We've got hunters in the city. Shit. Also drugs. There have been attacks. The Castellan's manor was raided. What? Maria Palma had an encounter with one. As far as I know, no one's dead yet, but no one's exactly checking up on all the Anarchs and the Thinbloods, so I'm not really sure what the damage toll is there, but... I can look into it. How has the Ivory Tower responded? Mostly they haven't. With Lou in charge, they see a prince in Seattle. That's all they care about. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an Archon coming by or some kind of investigation in the next couple of months, but for the moment... What, 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 what's an Archon? Uh... Reggie rejoins back up with the conversation. Agents... Okay, Reggie, uh, the long story short is, you know how there's a power structure in the city? Vaguely. Yeah, so that keeps going upward, and there's a secret council right at the top, and they have people do their dirty work for them. And if we play things badly here, we're going to get a visit. Wait, there are vampires outside of Seattle? There are kindred everywhere, Reggie. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I didn't know that. I thought it was just like a Seattle thing. Has anyone... Ugh. This is selfish, but is, is my band okay? Do you know? As far as I know, they're fine. Corridors seem to be one of the main targets, so they've been laying low. What? Why? You are kind of the most outspoken and out there. Uh, okay, but... Easiest to find by hunters. That's all kind of why I wanted to get you all in one place. Like I said, a little bit after you left, I started having visions that you would return. So I knew you weren't dead. I just didn't know when. They drew me to your theater, Matthias, and I was there... Every week, I probably should have guessed it would have been the Equinox, but I didn't know. As a Malkavian, and she's Malkavian too, I know I'm a bit broken off from the whole mind melt thing. Mm-hmm. The cobweb, the uh, the Malkavian Madness Network. When she says, I've been having visions of you, can I kind of like read her of like what her intentions with us are? Yeah. Because I know that she seems concerned with us outwardly, but I'm wondering if this is all a big game of chess to her right now. Sure. And I think Reggie is, like, just so paranoid about everything. Matthias is rubbing off on you. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead and roll Wits Auspects. Sorry, Resolve Auspects. Okay. And add one die. Uh, I have a minus one because drugs, right? I'm definitely not on any. No, you're you're fine. You were good before you went in the door. That much time hasn't passed for you. Okay. All right. Then we got a plus one to that. That is four successes. So not that high. Pretty four is good. Remember, three is the is the default. So right, um, right, 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 right. Four, yeah, four is good. You so you you haven't done this before. You've noticed. I think around, it's completely unintentional. Yeah, you have noticed around Vivian. You sometimes seem to get little psychic emanations from her. And this is the first time where that noise uh, collapses and there is a break in the static, shall we say. Mm-hmm. And you, um, you, you do hear uh, sort of glimpse echoes of her conversation with the other primogen at that Elysium. You hear echoes of the crowd shouting, vampires don't dream, vampires don't dream. You uh, see glimpses as you look to each of your coterie mates as if they're still there, but the, they're cut out of a background and you see Matthias in the prop theater on stage as he must have been 30 minutes ago. And throughout all of it, there is a deep sense of purpose. There is something that she is going for here, but you also feel the same paranoid, spine-chilling shiver of an animal cornered in its cage. And Hmm. you can tell that she is both deeply relieved to see the four of you, 
uh, especially you and Matthias. Her mind is racing with plans, trying to figure out how to use this time that you have right now. And she is scared of what might happen next. Okay. And she also, as you do this, she does not register anything from you. She does not seem to notice that you're taking this in from her. Yeah, that's fucking cool. I love that. And she says, but that's why you're here, because I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure Lou pulled something to make that vote swing in her favor. Everyone thinks you're dead. Reggie, we're lucky with you. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't explain everything right now, but you're kind of a blind spot for the other Malkavians in the city. So we have an opportunity here. I want you guys to find one of these hunters and figure out who brought them here. Because I have a sneaking suspicion it might be someone we know. What do you mean? You think it's Lou? Or someone in her corner. Why would she want that? Create chaos, claim stability. Hey man, did any, any fucking robbery or any, just, it sounds generic, but just any crime benefits from a big fucking distraction. Yeah. So, you want us to, what, like interrogate a hunter? Yeah. That's the long and short of it. Okay. I might be able to get some answers out of them. I can help. Definitely. You seem awfully confident. Now, if there's anyone you trust in the city, and I mean trust with your unlives, My bandmates. You can call them and let them know you're okay. You gotta impress upon them that no one else can know you're back. All right? Okay. All right. I'm gonna take you to the, one of the spots where an attack happened. I trust you guys to take it from there. All right. I think as, and she might just overhear this, but as she's sort of like leading us out to whoever's hanging back behind her, I think Reggie's just like, should we tell Pox that we're alive? For the time being, I don't think so. Oh, I bet they're missing us right now. Or maybe they're not. I, I don't know. Feels to like be honest. Real. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, hi, Viv. Hi. I, I haven't seen or heard from your friend since you disappeared. Okay, then. If she was smart... They probably went to ground. They're hiding. All right. Look, um, let's just, let's get going and we can talk on the road. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you're back. I'd say it's good to be back, but I don't know if that's the case yet. Man, I did not miss this fucking place. I won't lie to you. And Reggie starts walking down the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Matthias, even you have to admit it's better to be back than not to come back at all. Yeah, you're probably right. Antonio walks past the two of them as, as they're having that conversation and just mutters, I wouldn't be too sure. Hmm. Uh, Vivian nods her head and you guys dug out from the safety of the lighthouse and step back into the rain to head back to her van. As we're getting into the car, I am going to take out my phone and I am going to send a text to my band. Okay, group text. Yeah, group text to both of them. It's going to say... We're back. Keep the cover up. Dispel rumors if you hear we're back. Delete this text after you both know. I love you both. Except. Yeah, you get a an almost immediate text back that just says uh, OMG in all caps and a, a heart react to your message. Who says OMG? And is it Venus? Uh, it is Mercury, actually. Oh, okay. Then she says, we'll delete all of this. Knew you'd be back. Please stay safe. Love you, love you, love you. Talk soon. Really soon. And then Venus texts just a uh, a, a gif of uh, the Terminator saying, I'll be back. And then under that she sends, you, five months ago. Also, it's been five months. Or like 4.95. You probably knew that already. Okay, bye. Love you. Okay, bye. Again. I don't even heart react because... Just the less communication sent between, the less there is to delete. I don't know. Yeah, you see uh, you see the heart react then is taken off of your message. And uh, yeah, I, I close out of the message app, probably stare at the message app for a second. Just this is really this is really a powerful moment. This really sucks. 
you know, I miss them so much and I want nothing more than to go back to them, but I know it's important to just kind of end the communication here. So I close out of the message app and I put my phone down. As you go to put your phone down, you get a buzz and a notification on Facebook. I check it. You see, it says that there's a new post from Shiloh Gallagher. I immediately open that. You see they have posted a short album of like six pictures of what looks like their birthday party. Uh, they say, oh, I forgot to post these pictures from two weeks ago. Thanks to everyone who came out, had a great time with the whole fam. And among the pictures, you see their sister, you see their uh, father, Danny, in the uh, background, kind of avoiding attention. I linger on him for a minute. And you see David. I linger on him for a longer minute. He's uh, bundled up in an armchair. Doesn't look like he's totally present, but he is smiling. I think something clicks in her mind. Or ticks. A snapping of some kind. And she stares a little too long at the picture. And maybe she doesn't quite put it away for the rest of the car ride. You drive through Seattle streets. Rain pounding on the roof of the van. Reflecting on everything that just happened. And everything that is still yet to come. So closes another chapter of Midnight Ooh. Gravity. Ooh. Ooh. We're back, baby! We're back. The so the, the hunter uh, becomes the, the hunted. Timothy. Oh. Oh. Yeah, where's Timothy? Where's Mystery Timothy? Mystery Timothy. This is Seth. We don't have a well, plug master. We don't so. have our plug master. So good <laughs> morning. No. Good Some deep morning. Part of me truly was waiting for Seth to say something like he had also <laughs> yeah. been waiting here the whole like time. Like Seth had driven to my house and then was something just going like to show up. I literally, I oh, that would have been amazing. That would have been pretty funny. Yeah. Anyway, um, can Rachel plug? Hey, everyone. Just shouting out again that next week, October 1st, we have our first ever live show at Brooklyn Game Night in Industry City. Yay! (laughs) Yeah. um, If you are in the area, come on by for an actual play show that is out of this world. Literally, because we're playing Stars Are Dead. (laughs) Um, You can find the address by looking up Brooklyn Game Night. That's K-N-I-G-H-T on your nearest navigation device. Doors for the show are at 7 p.m., although you are welcome to stop by and play a game before then, and tickets will be $12. We are super excited, and we'll see you there. Thanks. Woo! That's a plug-in. Casey? Uh, you can check out my social medias at Casey underscore Reardon on Instagram and TikTok. Sometimes I post voice acting stuff there. Also, uh, check out our website, uh, where we have some cool merch and stuff available cool for sale. Yeah, so check that out. We also got some little bonus content stuff that Jonas has written about Midnight Gravity. So look at that. Might be more soon. That might be more soon. Even more exciting. That's a plug-in. Andrew, (laughs) you you want some more RP Gestures goodness? Hop onto our YouTube channel where you can see all of our audiovisual conglomerations. Uh, You can see them on our Instagram and Facebook as well. Watch them wherever. See our beautiful little faces and little squares. Because that's what we are. Little squares. Good. That's a plug-in, Sky. <laughs> there are few simple pleasures in life. A glass of wine by a fire. A book as snow falls outside. A quiet walk down the beach. Killing several hundred people with dreams. Or leaving a review for a podcast. That's right. One of the joys of life is just leaving a simple five-star review for this podcast. And you could do it so easy from your phone, your computer... A tablet? Whoa. Maybe, nice. dial up. Maybe a call, second phone? Maybe a call third phone. Call into your Ooh, local radio station and lot. demand they leave a review of this podcast. That would be cool. That would be pretty cool. Anywho, simple pleasures in life. Leave us a review. Better be a good one. You know what else is a simple pleasure? A good Saying night. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. Good night. On the morning good after. Night. Good night. Little Dreams. sleepy night. Sweet dream. Frank the cab no, driver. No, 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 murder dreams. Murder dreams. Say good night to Frank the cabbie. Pretty bad dreams. Tip your local cabbie. Good night. Yeah, good night.